Mr. President was reckless in introducing these two policies, subsidy removal and Naira devaluation. Eze Onyekperi speaks. Lead Director of Center for Social Justice and Physical Governance Specialist Eze Onyekperi has during an interview on Channel Television faulted President Bola Ahmed Terembu's approach to removing forced subsidy and floating of exchange rate. As he noted that the president was reckless in taking those decisions. He maintained that the president would have thought about the implications of his actions before he took them. Even if you open your reserves, how hungry Nigeria is today, in the next one month, that reserve will be empty. Mr. President was reckless in introducing these two policies without sitting down on a table with some experts and doing the necessary projections. If you remove the first subsidy, what happens thereafter? You add about 400 naira to the price of fuel. What happens to the inflation? What happens to the salaries and wages of workers? What happens to the cost of living? And when you are able to do your simulations and predictions to say this is likely to be the reaction, then you say, what are we going to do to mitigate this risk? And these challenges will face the whole nation. You now design mitigation strategies and F, and that is it. I keep saying it that these people started on a very bad note. Their first impression is too bad. You don't just come out. Competency will forever, will forever be as in it is underrated. Competency. You don't just make decisions. They are supposed to be experts with the president. If, if he does not even know, he will source for. He will make sure he has people who are always there to tell him, no, this one is like this. People who are experts, not people who are really his people. People he will consult. Before you come and say, yeah, they left the subsidy for you. Yes, you want to remove the subsidy, but you should not just fly and remove the subsidy. You should not just jump into conclusions. You do your work. As a president, before you do things, you make sure you have done careful consideration. What if I do it like this? If I go to the left with it, happen like this. If I go to, you do what they call careful, you know, careful watching. You have watched enough. You have studied enough. Your experts have told you, oh, this thing, no, this is what is how it is going to happen. If you remove subsidy, this is what is going to happen. If you float the narrow, this is what is going to happen. Then after you have gotten what is going to happen, which are the disadvantages, how to reduce it, how to curb it. How to make sure the ripple effect from whatever does not affect and it does not lead us to this. Do you understand? But well, the president did not do so. He did not do so. And today, what do we have? We have people in Nigeria who are not happy. You know, the inflation is an all high. The force of the fuel price is an all high. You, we don't even have any hope. And all these things are happening. They remove subsidy without putting in place. You did not put it that in the next six months, or in the next nine months, or in the next 15 months, Oh, we're supposed to be having three or four refineries. I'm not talking about private one. No. Three or four refineries that are going to be mining. And in the, in the next few, uh, what's it called? And after that, we have, what's it called, four for lesser. Four lesser. We start buying four for maybe for 95. I mean, for 99 or nine, uh, what's it called, 100 naira. All these things, are, you have to. As a president, you have to. As in, before you take any, it is not a you thing. It is a we thing. You have to careful observe. You have to be careful with every decision you take because it is not a you thing. But alas, he did not. So long our president is in the third world countries, we will continue to dance with the tone of a devil's blue eyes, white from the western world through the new system of colonialism called New World Order, the people of their country will never find it easier with life. These people want to spoil business for me now that I'm cashing out this big okay, cashing out big with this government. Tenable must continue after eight years. Do you know my team, it was over zealousness having achieved this. And they tell you, I shed you alone, she won't I shed you. You don't come outside and say the subsidy is gone. You do your math very well. Your math must be mathing, your subtraction must be subtracting, your multiplication must be multiplying, your decimal must be decimating. Your fraction must be fractioning. Before you do you do things with careful consideration because this thing you're doing is going to affect a whole lot of people. You don't just come outside and no no no. It's not going to work. Why is Asari Dokubo? 
him told us to hold Tony Blair responsible. If he fail, please come out. Okay, if you told him to, he told us to hold him responsible if Tony Blair fail. Hello. On point, Miss Daisy, you should have had a questioning strategy put in place first before implementing the above specified two policies. The rational and erratic time and mode of removal was amateurly and prematurely executed. The government of no direction, please tell them the truth. Tom. This is the best government so far. Nobody should complain to rest, get 100,000 naira per bag and fall 1,000 naira a liter. It's not funny. It's not funny anymore. Right from the ascension of the last administration, lack of political will to fight against corruption, lack of political will okay, to fight against corruption, to deal with the big ego behind the corruption in the oil sector, bring about subsidy removal. Wahari faith to fight corruption and it's led to removal of subsidy. Leader, okay, leader, we are all afraid to fight against it. Right from the session of the last administration, lack of political will to fight corruption. Okay, I've said this before. Which money would you have used to control the subsidy beyond that time? Better than the president being reckless, you are the one that is reckless. It is not true. It is not true. The money he budgeted for himself, his wife, the National Assembly, that money he used to give them money for the payment of those vehicles, uncle. That money, where, where is it? I beg. They thought that he is still dealing with Lagos affairs. But I mentioned him is yet to accept the reality that Nigeria is not Lagos. But because of Gragra, he has landed the entire country into a big catastrophe. That will be difficult. That will be difficult with him to survive. All right. Well, Mio, it don't happen to be said you're up on board. The thing is, this is, this is first impression. It's lasting for so, so long. It's lasting for so, so long. This thing now, these two things here, it has ruined a lot of things. I kid you not. It has ruined a lot, a whole lot of things for the president and even for Nigerians as well. So I don't think this should be the answer to the question. The answer to the question should be, what can be done? You understand? We have gotten to it. What can now be done about it? What do we do about it? To make sure that subsidy removal and the Naira devaluation is something that is keeping him on his toes. Alright. So the thing is... We must make sure what we do, what the call we look for solution. Solution, we can't just keep continuing forever and ever. Solutions must be met before we go further. Solution must be met too because we cannot continue with like this, right? Okay, on this note, you have come to the end of the news. We so say thank you for tuning in to listen until I come your way next time. Enjoy the rest of your day.